On the Limits, coverage of the Japan GT Championship is brought to you by Nissan. The heat is on for the sixth round of the Autobanks Japan GT Championship. Firstly, it's damn hot for this race at the Motegi Twin Ring Circuit, north of Tokyo. And the leaders in the contest for the JGTC's GD500 title are all fired up for this to be the make or break round of the eight race series. But even they concede that realistically, they're unlikely to be in the battle to win this race. Their focus, understandably, is on each other. Points leaders Satoshi Motoyama and Michael Krum are carrying too much penalty weight to think in terms of being out front here. The Nissan Skyline drivers are weighed down with 110 kilos of lead weight after constant top five finishes. Second place, Juichi Wakasaka and Akira Ida have 90 kgs on their Toyota Supra after their two wins in the series so far. And then there's another critical factor here, at this hilly, windy, technically difficult road circuit built around Motegi's IndyCar Oval. This place is owned by Honda, and not coincidentally, suits a mid-engine car like the NSX. Hondas have won here for the past two years, and one of the NSX's was quickest in recent testing at the track. It makes for some Honda happiness. Uh, I think uh, the race here in Motegi should be good for us, the race in Autopolis should be good for us, and the race in Suzuka should be good for us, so the future looks bright. No wonder you're smiling so much. Yeah, of course, <laughs> every day I smile. <laughs> Coronel's G-Zox car is in the best position to do well. He and Daisuke Ito proving to be among the fastest NXX drivers in one of the fastest Hondas. And their Dome NSX is carrying just 10 kgs of handicap weight. The sister car of Sebastian Philippe and Rio Mishigami is, in comparison, seriously weighed down, toting 60 kilos as a result of its surprise round five victory. With a comparatively modest 50 kilos of handicap weight on board the Skyline he shares with Masami Kagiyama, Richard Lyons is confident about moving up from third in the standings. Yeah, I'm sure that we can uh, we can lose the gap uh, this this weekend. Uh, we just need to need to keep cool and uh, you know bring the car home and uh, in the top spot. And I'm sure that we can. We've put ourselves in a good position for it. So yeah. Similarly confident are ex Formula One driver Eric Comas and teammate Takeshi Suchia with 40 kilos on their Wood One Supra. Well, yeah, we've been a little bit unlucky last two races. If you look at the data, we've been. We, had, we scored the quickest pit in time, uh, and job uh, during the pit, pit job, and out lap quickest yeah. last two races. So really, races after races, the package look stronger and stronger. A shame there is on, only three more races to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> in GT300, series points leaders Shinichi Yamaji and Katsuyuki Nishizawa are expected to struggle a little here in their Porsche, with 60 kilos on board. Second place, Koda Sasaki and Satoru Goto aren't much better off. There's a 55 kg handicap on their Toyota MRS. The surprise performer this year, the old turbo Nissan Silvia, is third with just 30 kilos of handicap weight. And it's only a matter of time before the new Toyota Celicas unleash some more of their huge potential. And this tricky track is reckoned to very much suit mid-engine cars, like the Garaya, currently only sixth in the series. Handicaps or no handicaps, the top teams with the best drivers and the fastest cars always seem to rise to the top.
And this meeting's no different. The Tom's Toyota team grabs pole, courtesy of Takeshi Suchiya. And one of the works Nissans takes second. Richard Lyons ending up just one hundredth of a second off pole. Yeah, uh, I'm very happy uh, because this circuit is Honda circuit. Uh, oh, but the uh, surprise, uh, no, not so bad, not so bad this circuit. Uh, our tyre, mission, mission is a uh, uh, good combination, this layout, stop and go. Maybe very difficult race and uh, this is, today is very hot condition, but uh, maybe I and uh, Eric, Eric San is uh, very strong. Né? The Coronel Ito Honda qualifies third. And Hironori Takeuchi and Yuji Tashikawa shrug off an 80 kg handicap for fourth. Ida and Wakasaka win the battle of the leading GT500 title contenders, qualifying fifth despite the weight handicap. Arch rivals Motoyama and Krom are a row behind, seven. So uh, at this point, it's not just a, it's not just the winning points that uh, matter. It's more of a weight problem, and I think we only have uh, we're like two 20 kilos lighter than 23, and that's quite important at this point because we have a uh, free race to go, including this one. And uh, I don't know because like NSX is kicking in very fast, and uh, we don't know how much they could come in, and maybe they could do a critical factor in the in the championship. Also. Well, we were aiming for a top 10, but uh, we're starting P7, which is uh, more than we have expected, and it's very, very good. I mean, okay, we are behind number one car, our biggest rival. It's a long race, and of course, we will try everything to, to get ahead. In GT300, the Garaya takes pole by four tenths of a second, giving hope of a late title charge. Mas I think we're like 20 points behind and uh, we still we have two rounds after this and uh, I think it's getting very important that uh, we have we gained enough points so we could be part of the championship battle. The Sigma Tech Salika is second fastest qualifier. And the only Subaru in the field claims third. A welcome return to form in a poor season so far after the death of the team's leader. And all the team were emotionally down at some point, but I think we're back together. And since our loss is so immense, we want to build, we want to uh, put ourselves back together and uh, be more successful to live up to his, what he had uh, expected from us. Series leaders Nishizawa and Yamaji are solid with fourth fastest. Three places ahead of arch rivals Goto and Sasaki. Race day at Motegi is unrelentingly hot. Spectators and teams alike relying on sun umbrellas and fans to cool off. Some people on the other hand just wear less clothes. While the drivers look to cool suits, ice packs and loading up with water to make the expected 50 degrees in the cars survivable. But even such sweltering heat isn't enough to discourage a big crowd from turning out for this two hour race. Time now as the field heads off on a seemingly misnamed warm up lap to check out the front of the grid. Suchia posted a 1 minute 27.2 second lap for pole, 100th of a second faster than Lyons in the first Nissan. Daisuke Ito was just a tenth of a second slower for third, with another tenth back to Tashikawa. Then in fifth comes Wakasaka, head of Benoit Treloya, and seventh and eighth, Motoyama and Lotera. The top eight covered by just half a second. In GD300, Nitta took pole in 1 minute 56.1 seconds in the Garaya, a good four tenths of a second faster than Sawa's second best time. Tanikawa was only another two tenths slower ahead of Yamaji. Kinoshita took fifth in the Nissan ahead of Tanaka, while Sasaki and Aoki rounded out the top eight over a second off pole. So Takeshi Suchia and the Tom's Toyota on the left 
leading the field to the green light. Masami Kagiyama alongside of him. Suchia, of course, hoping for his first race win this year. Controlling things nicely. Lots of ducking and diving behind. Kagiyama settles into the second spot. Ito in third in the Honda. Then it's Ida and Takeuchi in the two Toyotas behind. We're on board with Ida. Oh, he gets a little loose as well. Maybe got an assist there. In turn one, gets it back under control. Oh, trouble at the back. That's the VMAC. Goes spearing towards the wall and then rocketing back onto the track again. Looks like he's come away unscathed. But look at Tsuchiya opening up a big gap already out front of this race. Kagiyama's in second in the Nissan. Then it's the Ito Honda. Ida in the Toyota and Takeuchi in his Toyota next. And it looks like the whole field has got safely through this first lap. Morio Nitt has done better than that. Out front in the lead of GD300. In the garage, he's opening up a gap on Kobayashi in the Subaru. And this man, Kanaoka, he must have got a bad start, has dropped back a place and is now on the comeback. And just looking at the GD300 field, despite their opening moment dramas, looks like most of them all right. Not so for Sebastian Hi. Philippe, though. Started 15th on the grid, so that was a poor start, and already being rolled into the garage. No problems whatsoever for Nitta, though, making the most of this garage's suitability to this track and going away from the field. Ah, oh, big fight here. This is for second place in GT500. Masami Kagiyama fighting off Daisuke Ido. Well, Ido really showing that the Honda does have the legs here. Trying to come around the outside of him. Oh, that's dangerous. And he has to back out of it. Bit of bodywork flies there, so there was contact. Now we're on board with Kagiyama, and this time, looks like Ido's gone straight past. So finally, the Honda moves up second place. Another Honda in trouble though, this is Akira Watanabe's GT300 car, and that is the McLaren. Yes, there's the coming together between the two of them, and Aichi Tajima it is, and the McLaren goes spearing off as well. No such problems out front for Tsuchiya, leading a charmed life by the look of it and holding the same gap on the number 16 Honda. Big fight going on here, this is Kobayashi in the Subaru, just holding off Masataki Yanagida in the little Nissan, and a whole bunch of other GD300 runners as well. Oh, and Kobayashi's run wide, don't know whether he's got a problem with the tyres or whatever, but that's costly, look at that, four or five cars gone past him, and now Morio Nitta has company, the Salika closing in on him. Oh, and same story for GD500, because now Suchia has in his rear vision mirrors this car. The Honda of Daisuke Ito on attack for the lead. And talk about attack, here comes the rookie Kanoka down the inside of Morio Nitta's Garaya. Looks like he's got him. The Salika's got inside there. That's the desired line as they head downhill for the right-hander at the bottom of it. One of the GD500 cars, the Zent Supra goes darting by, no problem whatsoever. Now it's the contest between these two for the lead. Very late on the brakes is Nitta, and the veteran turns in ahead of Kanoka and reclaims that lead. Now you can see it's looking like pit stop time. Eric Comas getting ready to get out in that lead car as our two leaders, the GD300 and GD500 leaders, are under something of an attack. Certainly GD300 with the Celica all over the Garaya at the front. Here they go under one of the bridges, under the Motigi Oval, and head up the hill. Nitta doing a good job holding him off. Kanoka gathers himself for a charge down the inside. He should have it this time. Late on the brakes. Yes, he's done it. Very loose, but holds on to it and gets the lead away for GD300. Oh, problems here for Andre Lotterer. He's tangled with one of the slower Porsches by the look of it. Looks like they've both got away with it unscathed as Daisuke Ito pulls into pit lane to hand over to Tom Coronel. Nitta in as well to hand over to Shinichi Takagi. And here comes Takeshi Suchira in rather a hurry. Komas is limbered up and ready to go, and so's the Tom's team. It's pit stop time in this Motegi sixth round of the JGTC and the two Toyotas, the class leaders of GD500 and 300 are in together. That's Eric Komas getting underway. Be interesting to see where he rejoins as Takeshi Tsuchiya looks at the TV monitors to see and there it is. The Honda of Tom Coronel has got the lead away. He's passed the Toyota at the pit stops. There's the gap. Just a couple of seconds or maybe one second in it, but a critical pit stop for the Honda team. And here's the lead in GD300, the Toyota Celica resuming in the lead ahead of this car, the Garaya, now driven by Shinichi Takagi, holding down second place.
Same spot in the race outright held by this man, Eric Comas, now behind the wheel of the 36 foot one Toyota. And here's our race leader in GD300, Kei Desawa, now at the wheel of the Sigma Tech car. Oh, and the other Salika has come out from its pit stop in second, ahead of the Garaya. And now there's this fight going on for fourth place. Wakasaka trying to get past Jeremy Dufour on the black and red Supra. Looks like he's done it. Yes, forceful move down the inside, no problem. No problems also for race leader Tom Coronel, holding a good gap now on Eric Comas. There's Comas back in second place. And here's Richard Lyons running third in the Nissan, so it's a Euro 1, 2 and 3 at the moment. Lyons working onto the front straight. And here's fourth place, Joichi Wakasaka on the Esso Supra. Whoa, trouble here, that's for sure. Things are more than just hot. They're overheated inside the Lamborghini as Wada Q goes in quest of a fire post. Looks like he's found one. They run to his aid. Lots of flames coming out of the back of the Lambo now. And they go to work to save what is one of the oldest cars in the JGTC. So the Lamborghini Diablo lives on. Oh, race leader approaching lap cars here. This is where you've got to be so careful in the JGTC. The big speed differential between these cars. Talking of differentials, here's the gap from the leader of GT300 back to the second place, Salika of Minoru Tanaka. Tanaka just holding steady there at the moment. So Sawa doing a good job out front of this race. Oh, this is a sad sight. Richard Lyons coasting to a halt here in his skyline, stopping from third place with just seven laps to go. The Garaya comes on past, holding down third now in GT300, and the sister skyline as well, but for Lyons it's all over. Well, that's a shame. Body language says it all. No such problems out front for Tom Coronel. There's the gap back to Eric Comas. That's holding steady. Ah, but look at the gap in GT300. Suddenly Tanaka in the second. Salika is all over Keita Sawa's car. This could make for a very dramatic showdown in the dying stages of this race. The two... Oh, and Sawa getting sideways there. On board now with Juichi Wakasaka holding down third. Oh, and no, he's not anymore because slipping down the inside goes Jeremy Dufour taking that place back. And look out Wakasaka because Hidetoshi Mitsusada in the 100 Honda wants past as well. Just ahead, Tanaka on attack. Oh, and both of them have lost it. They've both gone off the track. Tanaka backs into the sand. I think Sawa's got away with it, has restarted. Here's the view from Wakasaka's car as he comes down to that scene. There still is Minoru Tanaka parked up. Lots of dust somewhere in there, probably is Keita Sawa. There he is. He has rejoined the race and should still hold the lead at GT300. There's Jeremy Dufour in third place. Wakasaka in the blue car just behind him and Mitsusada behind him. But time has run out for everybody else because Tom Coronel coming down past the crash scene is going to the finish line ahead of this man, Eric Comas. Still about 100 metres behind him. There's the sight of Minoru Tanaka's car being towed away. So a last minute disaster for him, but it's all good for Tom Coronel as the Dutchman goes to the chequered flag for his first win since his return to the JGTC at the start of this year. Tom Coronel first, there's Eric Comas coming in second place, and here's the third place fight, going to be led by Jeremy Dufour, Joichi Wakasaka in fourth place, and Mitsusada in fifth. Wakasaka seems happy enough with that, that's for sure. And here taking his debut race win, the 27-year-old Keita Sawa had such a big lead that he was able to survive the last-minute dramas and still take the win. Oh, sad sight. Nissan's Michael Krum, who was eighth, out on the last lap. Here's Takagi coming home second, courtesy of Minoru Tanaka's off in the late stages. And this is Kinoshita coming home third in the Nissan 350Z. That'll be good for his championship points, that's for sure.
Yeah, we knew uh, this car 16, eh, Tom? Would be fast. So uh, <laughs> I know that would be a big fight if he, if he was uh, able to pass us. And, yeah. and the pit walk was maybe not that good than usually for us. Yeah. And then uh, I tried to, to stay behind, then to push, but he had uh, a control of the situation. So I just had uh, to expect, like in the old days, that he get trouble with this gearbox. But now this car is very reliable, <laughs> so it didn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well done, Tom, eh? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, this is why we are here for. Uh, told me uh, that you have to do the, the outlap, uh, unbelievable. So I really pushed hard for the outlap and also the second lap. Then I had a little bit of traffic and I didn't know where Eric was. So I wanted to see where he was. And then the team started shouting to me, but I didn't understand what they meant. But that meant that he was just coming out of the pit. And then I saw him behind me and I just tried to control it to keep it four seconds. And, uh, he was pushing in the beginning, so I had to push as well. So I thought, Eric, take it easy, because then also I can drive easy. But uh, as we know, he always pushes. Like in 98, it's always the same with him. <laughs> mm. So debut, two wings, uh, yeah. so, so happy. <laughs> no, no good things. <laughs> because last uh, 10 laps, yeah. I, I excite uh, barely. Nervous. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, down lap time. Yeah. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> this is uh, easy. This. The outright win then to Coronel Anito by five seconds from Suchir and Comas with the Dufour Ara and Wakasaka Ida Toyotas next. Kato and Mitsusada get their NSX home fifth. The Salika shows its class in GT300. Sawa and Kataoka taking the win by 39 seconds from Nitta and Takagi. Kinoshita and Yanagida are another 37 seconds behind in third. In the championship standings, Wakasaka and Ida go into the lead by four points ahead of Motoyama and Krum thanks to their non-finish. Suchir and Komas rise to third. In GT300, Sasaki and Goto take the lead from Yamaji and Nishizawa while Hoshino and Uematsu hold third, now shared with Kinoshita and Yanagida.